How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now today I'm going to jump into wall insulation and the options you have for a shed or detached garage. Now this is a 12 by 16 storage shed that I'm converting over to office space. We've already completed the ceiling insulation which is two inch rigid foam panels and now we need to insulate the walls if we have a hope of heating and cooling the space with that window unit. We're going to compare three main options you have, some of them classics like fiberglass insulation, but others newer contenders like these spray foam cans that have the promise of working and could be super convenient, but does it actually live up to the promises? Let's jump into it. First up, fiberglass. This is an R13 value. It comes in bats in a roll like this. This would be the smaller amount of quantity you can buy. I just rolled that out and then referenced my 91 inches here with a Ulfa blade to extend that out and easily cut with a few passes. You'll press that into place. It's very easy. Just don't over compress it. You want it flush with the wall surface. And one mistake I used to make, you can use staples to secure it. I used to put the paper on the outside here on the inch and a half two by four. It actually should go on the inside, keeping the inch and a half clean for your wall covering. Now, number two, and then we'll start to compare these side to side is rock wool. This one's getting more and more popular. It is a little more expensive and we'll talk about that. And this is a large bundle, which comes with bats two of those bats each of those are 48 inches long so i'll need two of them to fill out this space again this is made for two by four construction make sure you know if you have two by four or two by six no cutting on that first one i'll just put it in place the nice thing about rock wool or one of the nice things is you don't get little slivers in your skin and itch like fiberglass it's much easier to work with and just as easy to put in place and to cut so we'll cut that second one to size press it in place and now our two cavities are filled with our two products now, if you go into pretty much any home improvement store, you're going to see this great stuff kit. It comes with multiple different tips here. We're using the blue one, which is going to get the fan needed to give a complete surface coverage. And then we'll use two of these cans, seeing how far do they actually make it so we can compare the overall cost. I'll start off and they come out pretty fast and it's going to be a little messy, but try to be consistent with your spray about eight to 20 inches off the surface. Here, I'm about eight to 10 inches off the surface. And working our way down to try to fill the cavity and we are already through the first can this is not looking good knowing that we're not even completed with one bay here and we're already well into our second can now remember this is going to only be about an inch to an inch and a half thick we'll see once it fully sets up how far that goes out and if we have some inconsistencies but that's about it. And you got to let it cure. Don't go back and do this, which I did, because you're just going to displace that foam and then a chunk's just going to fall on your floor. Now, to make sure I can do the price comparison, because I was a little thrown off on that coverage for the actual great stuff, I bought a Stanley kit from Amazon and see if we can get better coverage on this other bay so then I can get a good price comparison versus rock wool and fiberglass. And it does come with a better gun and a cleaner. There's a few different perks to it. You'll see a link in the description. And this is exactly what we're focused on here at Everyday Home Repairs is to help you save time and money on your DIY projects. You'll see links in the description. We actually have free shed build plans if you have a shed build in your future, whether it's a small four by eight or all the way up to a 12 by 20, We'll give you a materials list so you can get a cost breakdown comparing build versus buy so you can make the right decision and overall basic dimensions to start getting your plan of attack for your own shed. So let's go ahead and put the Stanley to work, see how it ranks up to the great stuff and put all of our information together in that one table. Now coming out of the gates, I was pretty impressed by the Stanley because it was a nice uniform stream. It'd be easier to get a consistent depth of spray foam, but that stream did start to tighten up even towards the end of this first can. And with only the first can, again, kind of doing half the first bay, this is looking to be somewhat similar to the great stuff. Going into can two, I have quite the stream still, switching out tips to try to make it better. And remember to wet down your wall sheathing or you'll have blobs like that fall off like I just did. And I'm just gonna have to work with that stream. I have seen complaints like this online on Amazon where people can't get a nice consistent stream when using the product. So now after applying two different spray foams, we can really understand the cost and compare that to rock wool and the fiberglass. So I have the table together. We're gonna compare four different factors. R value, you can see the results right here. Fiberglass coming in at 13, rock wool at 15, two inches of the great stuff would be coming at eight. 
And then the Stanley two inches would come in at 12 R value. Now I also did put in rigid foam two inch board, that'd be a 10 R value because that was a pretty popular response when we pulled our audience of what kind of insulation would you use in your shed? Actually, the rigid foam was the most popular and that is the one that we used on the ceiling here, which gives us an R10 on our ceiling. Now cost is crazy different. $18 per 32 square feet. Why I picked that, that's gonna be one sheet of your siding. You can kind of compare that, see how many sheets of siding you need for your shed and compare, okay, $18 for fiberglass is actually gonna do three of these bays here because it's eight foot, that would be four foot. So that is gonna be your 32 square feet, $18 for our fiberglass. Rock wool, about 2X. You're looking at $40 for the rock wool to cover that same 32 square feet. But buckle up, because the rigid foam sets up to 58. Great stuff would be $120, insane. And then Stanley would be $150. So that just like completely disqualifies those from a DIY way to insulate your shed or your garage space. For me, I'm gonna go with Rockwool. I'm gonna bite the bullet a little bit on the cost, get a little better insulation. I love the product. You don't get little slivers in your hands. You're not itchy. It's a fantastic product that also resists absorbing moisture, which could be a problem with your fiberglass, especially if you're getting any moisture coming in, dust, dirt, debris over time then that is conducive to environment that could create mold. So if you wanna see us install Rockwell all the way around this 12 by 16, some tips and tricks and how much did we actually spend, in addition to helping you avoid the number one mistake homeowners make when converting a storage shed to something like an office space, she shed, workshop, check this video right here and we'll walk you through the complete install. If you're wanting a great place to start in our most popular DIY shed, check out this video right here. We'll walk you through a four by eight lean-to design, which is one of the best places you can start off if you're just getting into DIY building. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.